All right. How's everybody doing? Welcome. Happy 2022. We're trying out some new stuff here. Um, hoping that uh, folks can hear me. I'm trying out this new microphone here. So let's see how it goes. I'm just going to put my headphones on and see if I can hear myself. All right. Kind of. Not really. I'm just going to take them off. So welcome to the first uh, live stream of 2023. If you're watching this live, which someone is, uh, welcome. If you're watching this in the future after it's been posted, um, please let me know. Um, if you can hear me, I'd really appreciate uh, dropping me a line and saying hello. Uh, I've got my guitar here and I'm going to try playing it and seeing if that comes through on the stream as well. So... We'll see how that goes. Let me uh, again, let me know if you can hear me and if you can hear the guitar. So, uh, today's topic to kick off 20, 2023. I might have said 2013 before. That's dumb. 2023 we're going to talk about music and technology um i've got some topics here to kick off the uh discussion uh and this is a two-way street so drop me a line drop me a comment say hello um and we'll go from there so um again thanks for tuning into my weirdness uh today's topic is basically how technology influences the musical creative process um these days what's new what might be exciting in 2023 that's changing how you do things uh, i'm gonna ramble on about what uh changes i've made and and uh, on the technical side um to you know improve my musical uh, expression uh, basically you know seeing what the equipment can do for me and what i can do with it so um yeah anyway uh we'll get things going um thanks uh we got a couple three viewers in here so far so thanks folks for joining feel free to drop a line say hello let me know if you can hear me uh, i'm trying out this new rig here so seems to be working and uh, like i said i got my guitar here so We'll try playing some notes on that, maybe if uh, if it works. So, um, yeah. So, technology and the creative process. How how does it influence? Is there anything new on the horizons of twenty twenty three? Did you learn anything over the last year that might have changed how that works for you? Now, <clears throat> I've been doing some thinking about this as I was preparing for the live stream, and I'm like, well, you know what? technology and the creative process really that's what my own uh, channel is about uh, oh hey steve thanks so much i guess you can hear me great um so really what um my channel is about technology and and the creative process because it's mostly about gear and playing music not just my channel if you're watching this channel chances are you probably watch other channels that are related to uh, gear and, and music and you know we all you know as a subtopic or as an aside to that we all suffer from gas you know because it's like man can this technology really help my creative process is this new pedal is this new guitar is this new piece of equipment um, gonna gonna help me see and create in new different ways right you know compare and contrast that with uh, kind of how uh you know another line of thinking you know which might be more uh, minimalist that says you know i just need my you know any guitar any guitar will do any amp will do or you know i just i need the basics to to get through right so that's another 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 way to look at it um now i'll speak primarily obviously from my own experience but i'd love to hear what your guys experience is as well uh, oh, thanks, Jamie. Glad glad to hear that I can uh, that I can be here heard. Let me know where you guys are all uh, beaming into or beaming in from as well. Uh, give give a round of shout outs um, to uh, to those folks that are uh, that are uh, viewing the chat live here, viewing the stream live, I should say. So, like I said, you know, from my per perspective, um, 
I got a lot of gear last year and one thing kind of led to another just in terms of, um, well, I'll, I got, like I said, I got a list here. So, um, you know, to start on a very, I guess, broad level, uh, what I was, uh, sort of experience that I was going through was one of, I was really trying to declutter and kind of get back to a more sort of pure, pure appreciation of sound. And that meant making things easier and getting a bunch of tools, getting a bunch of gear for that. So I guess there's a whole mix of stuff that I got on my list of stuff that I picked up last year that really changed. So I'll, I'll go through this list real quick and, um, and I'll tell you how, it, how this new piece of gear, this technology changed the way I make music. Um, and you'll see that they're kind of linked together. One thing leads to another. So, I'm going to start with, uh, you know, getting used to MIDI. So last year was the first year that I put uh, MIDI on to two of my boards, two of my bigger boards, um, in order to... Uh, oh, hey, Dwight. How's it going, buddy? Uh, I put MIDI on to two of my boards to make changing pa between patches and, and, and controlling certain pedals a lot easier to do. Um, so how did that change the way I express my music? Well, now I can just program, you know, patches in my DMC micro and I can hit, uh, you know, a button or, or, you know, or two, and I can, I can control like four pedals at once. They can all do one thing and I can create this like massive cool sound with it. So you can really shape the way you use your pedals using MIDI. Um, I can send out a clock speed to synchronize all of my pedals together. So they're all on one, one beat on one rhythm. So that's like super handy, uh, and that kind of changes the way I use my pedals live. Uh, you know, when I'm playing with my little jazz group. Uh, hey, thanks, Dwight. Yeah, doing good too, buddy. Uh, Happy New Year to you, my friend. Um, yeah, so it changes how I use it live. I can, I can, uh, when I'm playing with my little jazz group, uh, you know, just jamming. We, we, you know, I can, I can program patches and and move through complicated changes really quickly and the advantage of that is i'm using midi and so which means i'm using my actual analog or digital pedals like i'm not using multi-effects and we'll get into that after basically this list comprises uh uh things tech bits of technology some of which worked for me last year and some of which didn't so i took this all on last year and it's shaped what i'm going to be doing this year um but um yeah some stuff didn't make the cut which we're going to get to um, so speaking of those pedals that I put on the board that I control with MIDI, I mean, I got a bunch of them, uh, that just blew, blew my doors off. Um, and, um, some in specific really got me really shaped the way I appreciate music. So, um, besides guitar, like I also dabble in synths and stuff like that and uh, drum machines and, and other bits of technology. So, um, I'm not sure if you, anyone has, might've seen my, uh, Denny awards, my top 20 or sorry, my top 10 pedals of 20, uh, 2022. And on that list was the Empress Zoya, which is a modular type effects pedal, which is very much like a synth and that it has LFOs. Um, it can, you can, it's got CV control voltage. Um, you really, it works. It reminds me a lot of a synth and that it's got different modules and, and you have to patch them together. Essentially you have to link them together. Um, so it's, you can create a whole bunch of unique and crazy, um, pedals and it's got filters and, you know, envelope followers, um, it's got built-in effects, but it's just honestly more fun to create your own. So the Emperor Soya uh, changed the way that I expressed uh, myself because I really had to think about signal processing and effects. And like I, you know, I've, I created, I learned how kind of a lot more behind sort of the scenes and under the hood, how effects are created. So I had some fun creating like some granule loopers, you know, and, and like, you know, putting all kinds of controls into my different modules so that I could affect different parameters in real time. So, yeah, I learned a lot using the Zoya. Um, learning curve, like I said in my video, is, is pretty steep on that thing, but it's like it's so rewarding, especially when you start taking apart other people's patches and you see how like effects are, are kind of made and you start looking at pedal effects like, you know, a little bit differently after because it's like you kind of understand how they're built and how they're processed, like the signals are processed. So anyway, I think, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. Um, 
yeah dwight's saying he uses a beat buddy drum pedal uh, a lot yeah that's a cool pedal i use loopers well you know uh is the blooper no the chase bliss blooper is uh, on my list um of pedals that i got last year and it's uh, again I, I i like the weird stuff it's not for everybody um but um midi was something that helped with using the blooper because i could control the modifiers with with it the two buttons on the front of the of the chase bliss um and i could uh, you can do a lot with that that looper pedal it's it's an infinite looper it's just it's great you know the mood is great too i haven't tried that one um but other pedals that, that melted my brain this year that opened up a bunch of uh, creative possibilities are the um were the uh, maris lvx um that's a modular delay pedal i got that late last year and it was the number one pedal on my list of 2022 um ease of use and sound quality of it is amazing um that that it that pedal um you've got all kinds of filters in it all kinds of modulations that you can build on like it's not just the delay machine you can you can do a lot of stuff with it a heck of a lot easier to use an interface with than the uh even tied h9 or h90 which i'm now a proud owner of uh which is the next pedal i'm going to talk about um uh, way easier than the zoya to kind of get into the modular thing um Dwight's saying he's got a diddle looper and he makes his own backing tracks yeah backing tracks is a, are, are a heck of a lot of fun to make on the looper and just you know you can sky's the limit there you can practice and jam out to your to your heart's content um so i actually have i put on my web board two loopers i got a diddle looper x2 or two i think it's called yeah no just a no diddle plus that's the one it's got the little screen on it with the handy screen on it and anyway um between that and the blooper uh uh with the blooper controlled by midi um i'm actually uh, i've got a microphone set up uh that goes into a an input pedal called the splice made by temple audio devices and that microphone captures a signal and actually runs it through the rest of my pedal board into the blooper so i can manipulate whatever i get through the microphone like bird sounds or you know burps and farts and coughs and mature stuff like that I can I can import that or sort of capture that and then run that through the blooper and whatever other pedals I want on my F, on in on my uh, crazy wet board which has all kinds of stuff on it. So believe me, that has been so much fun. That's really changed that technology uh, with between the blooper and the mic loop and all the stuff that I mentioned. That's really opened up a brand new door of possibilities. Like I can sample you know a horn or anything that's in front of uh, that microphone. And Mr. Paul is here. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Happy New Year. So, yeah. So, H90, uh, even tight H90 is a pedal I also just picked up. And, um, yeah, it's pretty nutty. Um, I'm an H9 user. It was uh, number two or number three on my list of top uh, 10 pedals for 2022. Because I use it so dang, so dang much. And... Um, I'm still getting my head wrapped around the H90. It, uh, it's a, an amazing sounding pedal. I've just been using, going through the presets and stuff, running it in stereo, and uh, it's mind-blowing. Um, I, I, I honestly expected it to be that, that good just because Eventide's got such a rep, and um, you know a lot of their stuff sounds, sounds really cool. So you know, I was hoping that the H90 would, would, would would sound as good as it does in it and it sure does uh i just gotta get my head around using it in performance mode and you know figuring out how to make my own patches and stuff on it so so another pedal uh well kind of two of them that sort of changed the way I, I make music and like approach sounds and sound qualities uh or sound the, like just the sounds that i can make and have access to um I put them sort of in a, in a similar bucket because what they really do is mangle signals um, in a granular way. So um, I'm speaking, I'm referring to the hologram electronics uh, microcosm uh, as well as the Red Panda red, uh, Particle V2. Uh, both of those uh, pedals are, um, well, they're unpredictable. Um, they sound amazing. What they do to your signal is chop it up, delay it, and chop it up into little bits uh, called granules, and sometimes manipulate them, and sometimes randomize them and spit them back in, in cool ways, and sometimes you know there's pitch shifting involved. 
they sound amazing. Uh, I don't have them hooked up tonight uh, right now, but um, yeah, they're they're just fantastic creative pedals. They've got uh, the Microcosm also has a louver built into it that you can basically recycle and manipulate your sound as through the through the various parameters as you're looping back. So lots of lots of YouTube videos on on both of those pedals uh, uh, on the on the um, on the hologram and the red particle. Um, let me know what, you, what your guys' favorite stuff so far of 2022 is, or if you're looking forward to anything in, in 2023. Um, so yeah, so keeping on, on the sounds and, and boards and things like that level, um, basically, uh, on that wet board, I also put a bunch of key, different keyboard pedals on there. I got a Maris Enzo, um, a uh, EHX Mel9 uh, Boss SY200 and this little Moore keyboard pedal from uh, this little tiny one. Uh, again, sticking with the topic of music and technology, it's these pedals give me like these weird keyboard and synth sounds and pat you know I can make pads, I can create you know keyboard background parts, I get a whole bunch of textures and then those sounds in turn get fed through the microcosm and through the red part or through the uh, red panda particle and they just get chewed up and then i you know sample them with the uh with the blooper and yeah it's just it's a creative stew basically what i've tried to do is create a a, a, a boiler a think tank a, a a really creative launch pad with this particular pedal board um, all of that I did in 2022 and I've only really begun to scratch the surface on it with using the Zoya and all these other pedals together to make this amazing cosmic soup. Um, you know, on top of that layer, layering that on, uh, is the, um, fact that I went wet, dry, wet last year. Um, I've been watching too much of that pedal show, uh, with Dan and Mick there. Uh, not sure if you, any of you folks have seen that show before as well. Probably have if you're watching something like my channel. But um, yeah, I uh, I got into wet, dry, wet, and stereo rigs um, just by doing some experiments around here. Like I, I don't call this place Densical Music Labs for no reason. I'm always farting around or doing something with with mics and with pedals and you know what happens if i do this and plug this into here and 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 all that kind of stuff so so i started uh not all of my boards were stereo at the time but um uh so i was just kind of putting random pedals together and like eventually i started hearing how great to uh to uh two amps and stereo were sounding so i kind of jury rigged my own little wet dry wet rig with so basically one speaker fully wet with the mix fully wet like just a delay and a reverb and all that one in the middle that is just dry no effects whatsoever and then another one on the other side uh with fully wet effects 100 percent mixed wet like turn the mix up all the way on all your effects when i heard that i was floored um uh, the stereo sounded really great it was like kind of going from black and white to color tv but when i went wet dry wet it honestly it blew the top of my mind off i got really spoiled by it i had jury rigged a uh a rig yeah there's quentin saying i've got gas brah yeah i'm on i sure do yeah so the q man is here um happy new year brother um so yeah so i went wet dry wet um I invested in a special box made by goodwood audio that split, gives you so that i could build the pedal board so splitting all my signals uh stereo pedals wet and um it's got an output for just your dry signal it's unaffected and so uh that uh ah, man i once i went down that rabbit hole i, I ended up getting into microphone preamps hopefully you guys have seen that video that i put out the uh, microphone preamps for guitar players thing because i ended up starting to use two mics at least two mics and three mics for tracking guitars through the apis with a little bit of post-processing and i'm getting the bloody greatest guitar sounds i've ever gotten uh, out of my life so 
that uh, has really, really worked out for me. Uh, in fact, right now we're I'm going through this new uh, mic that I got, which hopefully sounded all right. I, I know when I've been on live streams with uh, my brother, the hack, everyone gives us a hard time. Uh, hey, Gussie Wells is here. Hey, buddy. Everybody gives me, gives us a hard time about my crappy uh, audio quality. Hey, Mitch is here. Hey, buddy. Good to see you, brother. Happy New Year. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. So, yeah, so we're going through this new mic. Uh, we're also going through the APIs uh, in, into my interface. Uh, oh, yeah, Dwight saw the microphone preamp thing. Yeah, hopefully you guys found that one kind of interesting or, like, you know, I, like I learned a crap load making, making that video. Um, I mean, I honestly, uh, I, I make a lot of these videos for myself, you know, it's just to experience, uh, experience and learn from, 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 uh, you know, getting all this different gear. Brian S is here. What's up, brother? A lot of, lot of, lot of heads, a lot of folks around. Good to see y'all. I've got a, I've got a world record high of 11 viewers with me right now. So that's really great. Thanks guys for joining tonight. So yeah, so you know, in the process of going white dry wet, I ended up uh, now you know with the H ninety and a bunch of other crap that I picked up. I uh, I um, I'm converting two of my boards now to stereo because I just can't live without it. I've got the option to go mono with those boards, just by uh, uh, you know just plugging one cable or two into them because the pedals will at the end of the chain will uh, will sum themselves, so that won't be a problem. Um that's a lot of what worked and that i went through last year now i'm gonna rant and complain uh about what didn't freaking work last year <laughs> so um I don't, and i'll get into my guitars and amps uh after this well i'm just gonna i feel like ranting right now uh i, I don't know i'm i'm not grumpy or anything like that but i don't know time to spice things up i guess right So yeah, so what's uh oh Brian's asking who's waiting on the PRS DGTSC besides himself. Oh Lars Guitars is here. Good to see all the hack fans. What's up guys? So uh I have actually just a sidetrack here. So uh, Brian's asking about the PRS uh DGTSC. I I watched this like whole video about the process of them making it. Always thought the um, DGTs were kind of a cool PRS, like kind of weird, like you know, no uh, fancy birds, three knobs, um, a little pricey. I, I from a little more pricey than uh, like a McCarty, I think, from what I understand. But uh, I'm sure they're great. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to my rant. Uh, what didn't bloody work? Well. It's interesting to me that any video that I mentioned, the quad cortex or, you know, Denskill has a quad cortex, goodbye quad cortex, a few months later, um, just pardon me for burping there. Uh, yeah, I went through the HX effects that I got off hack. I went through a Boss GT 1000. I make quad cortex videos. I get lots and lots of views on those. I can't get with digital stuff i mean mind you i use an ox box and i use like h90s and h9s and you know digital reverbs and crap like that that's still kind of digital and cheating and stuff like that but these freaking multi-effects things um i just can't get get down with them i'd love to know what you guys uh, have for, in terms of experience and if you've had any luck um, I tried. Um, I see in the chat here that uh, yeah, Paul saying he's got to stop buying guitars. It's getting a little insane. Yeah, I hear you, brother. I'll get in, we'll we'll get into guitars in a minute here. And the uh, oh, Paul, you got an amp situation. Brian's saying what what happened there, buddy? Hope uh, hope it worked out. And Dwight Dwight's got himself a Jackson bass guitar, adding some bass to his songs now. That's really cool. Brian's saying he had the Helix for a while. But uh, back to tube amp and pedals. Yeah, Brian, I, I'm with you, buddy. It's just more fun. I hate the freaking tweaking of, uh, you know, like going to a new patch and, and like 
you know, all of a sudden they just, you, you got different cabs or sorry, you got different amps and you know, your cabs sound like shit, you know, uh, pardon my swearing. Um, but yeah, like I could not get any kind of warmth or like a uh, feeling like I was really playing a guitar through a real amp. And that was the same for all of those devices. I mean, to a casual listener, you know, I'm probably hearing like a little more, bit more glassiness and a highly, I guess, produced guitar sound. But man, I just couldn't get down with it. Um, it, you know, um, like I the the uh, uh, Brian's saying that he looks hard to feel like my IT job. Yeah, man, like. And Paul saying he runs on an Axe, Axe, Axe FX three and tubes at the same time. Yeah, I mean that's probably a good hybrid, right? It's maybe best of both worlds. But um, yeah, just understanding, like I, I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, this live stream is all about um, technology, right? Like, if I, man, I use a Zoya. That's as that's as crazy IT and synthy and, and complicated as it gets. And like, you know, the H nineties are no joke either. Like. I play with some heavy duty pedals, but when it comes to these multi effects things and the, you can change your signal. It's just at the end, after all of that building and like, you can't really just, you know, bend down and tweak a knob. If the room is, you know, too boomy or something like if you got too much bass, you just want to go down and like, you know, correct something. Right. And, uh, it's not, it's just not that easy with an ax effects or, or, uh, you know, whatever, like whatever multi effects you're using. I just, and it lacks that organic touch. Um, Jamie is saying that last year you got an even tied H90 for Christmas and the Plethora X3, and they work uh, well good together. Yeah, man, those are two of my favorites. Um, I love my uh, X3. Um, and what Brian is saying is that the Helix, what the Helix did for him was it allowed allowed him to find the best amps and pedals that I like the best, and then he just bought those and sold the Helix. <laughs> yeah, it's like a buffet, right? You try all these amps and pedals and, and cabinet combos uh but yeah so like am i quad you know why i'm selling the quad cortex it's got like you know a bunch of views on it you know it's like you're spending so much time like going through these options and like you know i didn't use ir so much you know because like when i started looking at the list of irs and captures like i was just like like they sound like one maybe one percent or two percent different from each other like i, I you just use i don't know i, I start going blah, 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 like I really can't hear the difference after a certain certain point. Like you, my ears get saturated with with that. It's just it's too many options. Um, you know, like if I want a Fender sound, you know, I want a Marshall sound. If you know, if I want, I don't know, a Vox sound. Like start with the amp, and then you know, I know speakers and cabs make a big difference, but like the difference between like these thousands of IRs is sometimes it's. Whew, it's tough, man. It's tough to, to, to determine the difference between them. So, so yeah, I, I guess enough of that rant. Like, um, I, you know, I know the, uh, the advantages of that stuff really outweigh uh, a lot of the drawbacks, um, you know, uh, as, in terms of the digital stuff, especially if you're playing live in a cover band or, you know, some kind of function band or wedding band. Um, I know, you know, for every, you know, every old school pedal, you know, just plug or, or just plug straight in the amp guy. There's, there's a million more and more coming every year of folks that are into using the technology, uh, you know, uh, like the digital stuff. Uh, and I, you know, I'm surprised that a lot of old school guys are, are doing that. You know, Joe Satriani's, uh, somewhat, you know, someone high profile guitar player that apparently did record a lot of his tracks using just modelers. So, you know, uh, to each his own like i'm no you know i'm no expert um but i do know what i like and uh what feels better um and i think i've probably said this quote before but it just comes back to me it was a and i didn't make it up it was another comedian talking about another comedian who was talking about a famous star oh hey janice how's it going um uh, and what they were saying was that, you know, there's this famous star and there's this other star that's trying to be like this other star. But this real star, this elderly, you know, or sorry, an older school star was the real deal. They were the inventor of certain styles and, and, and a way of doing things. 
And this other artist that was probably just as popular or coming up as popular was kind of a, an imitator and was just sort of glomming on doing what this other person did, but just trying to cheapen it up and dress it up and therefore still getting an audience, but really, really riding the coattails of, of this other, you know, bigger star. And the comedian said, like, you know, like, if you want, you know, if you want diet, like, if you want the pop stuff, you go with this star. But if you want the real deal, if you want the real source of where this stuff all comes from, you go to the real star. You go to the old school. You go to where it's authentic. You know, why accept an impersonation of something when you can get the real thing? So that kind of stuck with me because I'm like, you know what? Like, uh, you know, it's sort of like, I don't know, you know, vegans, vegans that like, uh, this isn't really controversial, but vegans that like steak flavored stuff. It's like, why don't you eat steak then? I guess because you're vegan. I don't know. Like, it's just not this like, or you're expecting a vegan dish to taste just like a, a meat, a meat lovers type dish. No, that's probably a silly, stupid example, but. Mitch is uh, asking me a question here. I uh, saying you do, sure do a heck of a job on producing music in Logic Pro X. Thanks, buddy. Do you use a drummer in Logic or do you use Easy Drummer? Um, I uh, past tr uh, well, uh, sorry, I'm stumbling here. Um, yeah, the I use so in Logic I use um the Logic Pro drummer for a lot of tracks. For a lot of other tracks, I use like a real human drummer, like my buddy Mark, who's like a sick drummer. Um, I am planning on making the change to uh, easy drummer or maybe even superior drummer um, to see what that's like. I uh, so I'm exploring those ends. Uh, so that's a piece of technology that I'm going to probably get into in 2023. Um, Mitch, that's a great question. Quentin's saying that the digital's like fake boobs. Sure, I'm getting a second base, but it's just not like the real thing. Yeah, you know, like uh, I'll take a steak flavored steak, says Paul. Steak flavored steak with, with ketchup. You know, Quentin, your diet, man. I've seen it on Facebook. I I don't know what to say, brother. <laughs> but I'm glad you're still alive. It's keeping you alive. Um, Lars is saying that Easy Drummer 3 is great. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check it out. Um, again, like when I can when I can corral my buddy Mark into playing real drums for me, uh, wow. but, but, you know, he's a busy guy too. He gigs a lot. Uh, well, he plays a lot. He's, you know, he's got to like the track and all that stuff. So that gets, getting drummers, real drummers to play on your music is, is tricky, right? Um so um so yeah we're about halfway through here um so yeah so we're talking about uh technology uh and i've been ranting about you know technology that you know has really <clears throat> helped shaped you know like basically the way i create music the way i capture music uh quentin is saying vegan is latin for bad hunter <laughs> yeah <laughs> i can't run <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that was a bad joke um yeah, so <clears throat> you know a lot of these pedals uh, and and um, you know learning MIDI, learning how to use the uh, the Zoya, um, you know learning how to use mic preamps, all that's you know supposed to help me make better music and better sounding music. Um, you know, hopefully, yeah, again, <clears throat> I'm do doing this for myself to, to be completely honest and to be selfish. You know, I hope other people like it, but. Um, like chances are, if I, I I'm I'm a, I'm half idiot, half snob. So if it kind of makes me laugh in a goofy, like it takes a lot to make me laugh, but not much. Like I don't know how to explain that, but you know, like if it's if it's good enough to make me laugh, or and it's dumb enough at the same time, then I'm hoping somehow that it has merit, and then I'll put it out. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, you know, like I try and do something different on all my, uh, recordings and, and use a gear, use the gear in a new way, like use the technology to my advantage. Um, so yeah, that was a bunch of gear that didn't work for me. I mean, there's other gear that companies have released that hasn't worked. Like I'm thinking of like, you know, Gibson and their bloody robo tuners. Like that was a dumb idea. Um, you know. Uh, there's there's all kinds of tech that just never that's been released that just never caught on right so 
But um, yeah, let's switch uh, in the time we got left. Let's so I'm gonna switch to guitars and and uh, changes that happen. So guitars to me are tools and they're technology just as much as pedals and amps. Uh, we'll talk about amps after. But um, <clears throat> last year was a year of another year of guitars for me. Uh, you guys want to see my uh, you know uh, show or my. Uh, my episode about gas, you know, trying to quit it, how I've been managing it. It hasn't <clears throat> been going all that great, but it's it's been manageable. I think I'm settling down or slowing down. But, um, yeah, as far as guitars, it was a busy year last year. Um, and uh, made a lot of, lot, of, lot of changes. So early on in the year, I, uh, I re-brought, uh, you can probably see it over my shoulder there, kind of over there. The uh, <clears throat> Fender Johnny Marr Signature Jaguar. Uh, now, that's a guitar you probably see in my little YouTube picture. There's a white one there in my little, I guess that's an avatar thing, my icon. That's, uh, that's a guitar that I owned many years ago that uh, ended up uh, selling for some other crap. And I just missed it. Um, I really love that Johnny Marr Jag. Uh, it has a certain sound, um, like a nice clear tone short scale uh kind of vintage uh, radius and um bare knuckle pickups in it uh sherwood green which is a rare color and i don't have any green guitars so picked up one of those um brian's saying he's there's always something out there to try gretch falcon wouldn't suck i actually had my hands on one of those for about three days uh uh my good friend's wife bought one for him or i went to go with her to go buy it and i had to keep it in the house as a surprise for a few days and uh, i i think i it was just too beautiful i think i only touched it once but it was it was an incredible guitar um brian saying esp horizon wouldn't suck quentin saying a tom anderson drop top wouldn't suck yeah yeah i um Honestly, Quentin, I, I've seen some nice ones, but um, I the ones I have seen and played haven't really done it for me. On, on the, uh, And I've got a Tom Anderson. Uh, I, I've got a video coming up where uh, that, that Tom Anderson and a couple other guitars will, will show up. So the Jags, uh, so the Jag came in this year, and it sits really well in the collection. I'm keeping it. Um, I, you know, it's one. Of, so it's a buyback guitar. Had it before, bought it back like an idiot. Um, you know, paid, uh, found it on, uh, that was Craigslist or Kijiji. Uh, paid a, a decent price for it. Like the guy wanted a little more than I would have liked to pay, but it's kind of rare. And, uh, you know, when you see something like that, you got to go for it. It was meant to be. Another uh, video uh, that I made that had a lot of views was about the uh, Yamaha Revstar that I picked up. Um, Nick Huber wouldn't suck. That's what his wife said. Ah, yeah, Nick Huber guitars. I like, uh, was it the Orca? Or no, the Crowdster. Crowdster or Crowdster? Wow, one of them is slightly racist. I think it's the Crowdster, not the Crowdster. Yeah, watch this video get knocked. This live stream get knocked by YouTube now. Anyway, um, yeah, there's uh, Brian. There's a guy not too far from here that's a dealer of those. And I, uh, before I bought my uh, LP special P90, I was looking at one of those, like those single cuts that he's got with the P90s. Uh, those are those are super nice. Dolphin, yeah, that might be it, Brian. Good show. So the Yamaha Revstar came and it went. Um, I got a lot of views on those videos. Um, it's it, honestly. Revstar was a pretty cool guitar. Um, I just couldn't get on with it after a couple months. Like I used it on some recordings. It, I just didn't like the feel of it. I don't know. It felt like I was playing a piece of a '50s diner countertop or something like that. Like just the the sort of poly finish and like the odd shapes and edges on it. It had a bit of a comfort cut. Uh, it was pretty noisy. Like the P90s are pretty noisy. Um, I had like a, I think a five way switch, but like, and a push pull, which honestly, I don't really need or want that in a P90 guitar. I just prefer the three three position 
kind kind of thing. Uh, yeah, Brian saying like uh, for Micah. Yeah, like uh, yeah, just plasticky kind of. I don't know. Uh, and that felt good. Like it's a good guitar. It sounded pretty good, but um, I just I couldn't organically, chemically, spiritually, whatever, functionally bond with it. Like honestly, I and I gave I give all my guitars a good 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 playthrough and a good good time uh push pull has no reason to live i you know i i would argue brian it works well for me on some of my guitars but on that yamaha ref star did did not work at all so that guitar came and went so that one that piece of tech not so much uh good for not a good fit for densco music labs um you guys might have seen if you're on my uh facebook or uh i think i put it on instagram anyway um I got it in my head that I wanted like another uh, super shreddy type guitar. So I bought a uh, Charvel, uh, what was it called? A San Dimas Pro Mod. It was a blue one, uh, chlorine blue with two uh, Seymour Duncan pickups, uh, H2, 2 H, it was like an HH setup with a two point go to bridge. Really nice neck, um, slim, slim super neck. Um, my uh my bro uh, hack ended up buying a very similar guitar just in a in a hss uh format there which and i got to try that a little while ago and that's that's a kicking guitar um so i got rid of the charvel pro mod um uh, or the yeah it wasn't a dinky yeah it was pro mod, uh, i can't san Dimas. yeah i think it was a san Dimas. anyway got rid of that guitar uh because um I wanted an H90 <laughs> and I already had the Sir um, or have my Sir Modern. You can't really see it here, but that's kind of my uh, super, super shred guitar. Um, and um, yeah, like I just, there's something again with the Chevelle that I just kind of wasn't connecting with. Primarily, it came down to the pickups and the different pickup splitting, splitting or uh, different pickup switching positions, I should say. Um, yeah, Brian is saying uh, quote split humbucker sounds like ass. Yeah, I agree, Brian. A lot of them really do, for sure. It's hard to find good ones. And he's also saying they never thought he'd see get hack gig of Charvel. Yeah, I was talking to him and he did a, a his New Year's gig with a Charvel, which yeah, I, who knew? Uh, I just want to say for the record that I got my Charvel first and hack copied me. No kidding. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I sent my back because uh, I I just I just returned it because I wanted the H ninety and a couple other things. Uh, Genesis says she loves her court strat. Yeah, I hear great things about court. It's a great, great build builder out there, uh, out in the far east. There, I think, I think they're in the far east or Indonesia. Anyway, um, I've heard great things about them. Um, they, they used to, I used to see a lot of courts up here uh, where where I live. Um, so the yeah, so the Charvel went back. I mean, I already have a guitar that does something similar, and the pickup positions weren't really all that unique and switchy for me um and um yeah i just i didn't like the feel of it like didn't, didn't really dig it yeah janice is saying her, her court's pretty old yeah i haven't i, I i'm pretty sure that court's still around and, and making guitars um uh if i'm not mistaken they 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 make guitars for eh, maybe prs or somebody like that i don't know if you guys know uh drop a comment there um so yeah charvel came and went uh last year um again a great guitar i would highly recommend it. if you're looking for like a sub two thousand dollar at least canadian uh shred real shred uh guitar oh janice is saying it's the pink one in her, in, uh, in her videos yeah yeah i gotta i gotta check that i love pink guitars which i'm gonna get to in a second um yeah so uh yeah court's still around in uh in indonesia they make tons of brands guitars yeah yeah so thanks brian yeah thanks for sanity checking me i i thought i heard that somewhere before but yeah charvel's great guitar uh like uh like i was saying you know my brother hack's got one and uh his is pretty sweet the necks are, are super fast playing and very comfortable uh the pickups do sound great like um I forget what they are in the Charvel, the one that I have, but uh, they they sounded pretty good. Just not 
basically when I get a guitar with a five position switch, I got this like thing in my head that each position should sound a heck of a lot different than the other. I just, I don't know why. Um, I just, that's something, especially when you're paying like a lot of money for a guitar. So I didn't get that much variety other than, you know, switching fully to the neck or switching fully to the bridge and the Chervel. So I was just like, eh, I'm picky and whatever. So, um, so yeah, so that guitar went and another guitar came back. Like I was saying, my, uh, my Les Paul special, if I wasn't, I was eyeing the Nick Huber guitars cause I wanted a, a single cut with, um, P nineties in it. I, uh, if you've been watching my channel a while, you might know or remember that I had a, uh, yellow, uh, LP special with P nineties that I basically ruined. <laughs> um, well, I, let's say that I was feeling tinkerish at the time or, you know, tinker like, and I put, um, Lawler P90 pickups in it, uh, which I didn't like as much as the stock P90s. Like, well, see, I liked the bridge of the Lawlers more than the Gibson, but I liked the Gibson neck of the Lawlers and that. So it was, it was a crapshoot there. And uh, I got the guitar painted um, blue uh, by a uh, by a buddy of mine, and uh, it was it was a really good paint job. But for some reason, I just I fell out of love with the guitar. Kind of the guitar came back, changed. I think you know it. It's not that it sounded different; it just felt different with the extra layer of paint. And there was like a little bit of a shelf on the neck. Uh, from where the paint wasn't quite masked off like super perfect so it was it was a feel thing with the neck and yeah i just you know the paint job was really really nice but it wasn't like i don't know i'm picky like i said you know i i ended up finding a buyer for that guitar lost a bit of money on that with the new pickups and paint job that i put into it but came out alive um so that so that last paul special went and ever since then i've been like man miss that guitar wish i had an lp special uh you know with p90s gibson p90s um i did like the tv yellow but i saw this in in cherry i saw this last last paul special which is way down at the other end of the, my guitar wall here um i saw that thing and i fell in love with it it was like that sg cherry red uh, Les Paul special, uh, you know, with the binding on the neck, it's got such weight, great wood grain. I'll, I'll probably do a video on it, like featuring it pretty soon. And, um, you know, the big chunky fifties neck that, uh, you know, some people are not a fan of, um, but I, I love a big neck. Um, so yeah, so that was another buyback. So that's two buyback guitars. And there's a third. So um, if you've been watching me on uh, Facebook, um, yeah, I uh, and I had another one of my higher viewed videos was the video uh, called Don't Judge a Guitar by Its Color. That was featuring my uh, brand new at the time Ibanez P Pink Pia, which is a Steve Vai signature guitar. Yeah, I bought it back. Um, I sold it to buy some other crap at the time. Um, I thought the guitar didn't really suit my personality. And um, I didn't want to worry about the Edge Tremolo or the Floyd Rose there. Um, and uh, yeah, Quentin was kind of saying something that I was just thinking here. Uh, he's saying that he, he likes his Schecter but hates the EMG retroactive pickups. And the 24 fret guitar moves the neck pickup back too far. So yeah, so my Sir Modern and the PR 24 fret guitars, and they do move the neck pickup back, and it that does make a difference. Um, Dwight's saying he likes chunky necks too. Yeah, they're 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 fine like everyone i used to tell me like oh man you're gonna your hands are gonna get tired faster like nah man i i like that feeling um brian saying he got a second version of the same pedal he already has lpd yeah lawrence petros 74 limited edition he's gonna sell the og pedal yeah why not man yeah fuck. i've bought rebought so many pedals too like timmy ep booster man that's it's embarrassing Lars is saying he's got a 2018 Ibanez gem and loves it. Yeah, I eyed the gems forever. They're uh, they're crazy. 
Um, Brian's asking how the neck is on the gem and the Pia. Um, are they wizard flat? Um, almost, at least on the Pia, Brian. Um, on the Pia, it's got a bit of a shoulder to it, right? Slightly rounded shoulders. Um, so it's probably a little. Th I've I've heard it's a little thicker than than the um, than the um, wizards, uh, but pretty pretty flat. Yeah, yeah. Lars is saying it's wizard flat. Yeah. Yeah, pretty. I mean, when I when I say maybe a little thicker, like we're talking like a hair or two, maybe, um, you know, millimeters if that. So yeah, so stupid me missed the Pia, um, and like you're thinking to yourself, maybe, Dan School, you just said that you you got rid you you have the Sir, you have the Modern, that's your Shredder guitar. You got rid of the Shredder. Why did you buy another Shredder guitar, the Pia? I don't know. It's pink. It looks cool. Um, it sounds different. Plays better and sounds better than the Charvel. Yeah. All right. That's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with that. Uh, yeah, Brian's saying you can't do the wizard flat thing. Yeah, they're, yeah for some people, that have too, too flat of a neck actually causes some fatigue. And Quentin's saying that uh, it was made in Mexico, HSS drives Desert Island guitar. Man, those made in Mexico instruments are just, they get better every year. Like they used to be thought of as not as good quality, but they really stepped up down there. And uh, HSS is such a great balanced um, pickup set for, uh, for a guitar. Um, Brian is saying that he had a cool Ibanez, but for some reason the flat neck hurts the hand. Makes no sense. I think it's just, you know, the way that you got to stretch your hand, you know, and, and uh, all that. Um, by the way, I just want to check with you guys while I'll have your attention. Uh, if you can, uh, if you can hear my guitar, I'm just trying out a new setup here. Let me know if you can hear, uh, hear some juicy guitar there, folks. all right so um yeah so so a couple guitars came and went um oh yeah Lars is saying it sounds great thanks buddy appreciate it um five by five what does that mean brian <laughs> sounds good but needs more gain says quentin oh okay yeah I got it. I got the gain dialed back a little bit. Um, so yeah. So as far as guitars, the Jag came back, uh, Les Paul Special came back, and the Ibanez SP came back. So that was three three guitars bought back this year. Uh, Revstar went, the uh, Charvel went, and uh, so I'm at twelve electric instruments right now, which uh, like my wife is just barely tolerating. So. Oh, thanks, Brian. Brian means uh, military radio speak. It means your signal's loud and clear. Ah, oh, thanks, man. Good to know. I learned something today. Now, uh, as far as amps, we'll switch gears a little bit. Um, so new tech for me that I got last year, uh, got into last year, was you know saying goodbye to the quad cortex and all that uh, modeling stuff. I really got back into my amps and started appreciating them more. So I still have my, uh, my Mace, uh, Mark five 35. And I've still got my Sir Badger, uh, 30, 35. Um, both of those are hooked up to, to, uh, two by 12 cabinets. Uh, one, the Mesa hooked up, they both have Celestian vintage 30 speakers in them. Uh, I run the Mesa through the aux occasionally. Um, and it sounds really damn good through there. Um, you guys might have maybe seen my mic preamps compared to using the aux video um so yeah that that sound experiment uh, really really paid off for me um i did get rid of my orange custom shop 50 uh amp head and um and uh cabinet there my 2x12 vertical cabinet uh found somebody on uh, craigslist or sorry kijiji or whatever those things are called to uh to pick that up pick that up off of me and um that's an amp that is was a great amp but it does just kind of one thing really really well and i kind of tend to favor amps that use a lot i have a lot more variety in in sound and, and tone so 
Uh, so I found, a, and I needed to find the right buyer. Like an orange has got that particular orange had a very specific sound. So, um, you know, you, you just, you've got to be into that old school 70s orange sound. It's not like a rocker verb or dark terror, mini terror, or any of the newer stuff, you know, that that's out now, or the RR15s. So that amp was very, you know, unique and specific, and therefore could only be used in certain types of music and certain sound contexts. So I just, you know, I wasn't going to be able to use it as much as I'd like. So off it went, and part of that went to fund my uh, API 512V microphone preamp. So it worked out in the end. Um, the other amp that, uh, yeah, Hack hates the orange. Yeah, Hack, uh, Quentin's saying that Hack probably won't be buying that orange. Yeah, I doubt it. He was, he was like, I hate it. Um, yeah. And, and, I mean, sounded like I like the sound of it, but, uh, again, only, you know, very specific response on, on that on that amp um you you just and that was an amp that i had bought originally returned it after about a week and then ended up buying back again just because i thought i hadn't figured it out and it takes a while to get to know but um in the end i didn't want to keep it because it wasn't as versatile as i'd like um so um so along continuing along the amp journey um so I was stuck with three amps, or left with three amps, and, uh, you know, Mesa Cali Tweed, Mesa Mark 35, and uh, the Sure Badger 35, and uh, playing those a lot more, and I was just listening a lot to the differences between the two Mesas, and, well, the clean channels of all three, but particularly the two Mesas, and, uh, again, not to prom oh, you know, self-promote too much, but I did make a video a while ago about, you know, Mesa Clean Battle cha Challenge, I think it's Battle of Two Mesas or something like that, where I compared the clean sounds of both. They're both really comparable and, like, pretty, um, I don't know, not different enough for me to justify having two very similar amps. Like, I kind of like to have, like, a different flavor of guitar or pedal amp right uh, just to make make it more useful just to have access to more variety of sounds right like you know i don't have like i mean i got a couple of the similar guitars but i really like even my last paws are very different sounding so i just i like variety brian's asking if he's ever if i've ever tried any friedman guitars he had a kelly that he loved but it had a big neck like you like i'm more of a modern c pattern thin slim taper guy yeah dude um so there's this music store up here that sucks Friedman guitars. I tried two of them. I tried the... I didn't try Cali. I tried one of their Tele, Tele styles, T styles, uh, with P90s. And I had the big neck. Um, I didn't get on with it. It might have been just a bad one. Um, I didn't like the, the feel or the angle. It was also kind of, you know, relic and beat up. Uh, I'm not a fan of relic or beat up guitars, personally. Um... And uh, I played a another was it another Tele style that they had? No, sorry, it was just the one there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm with you too, Brian. I kind of like the uh, modern C pattern thin type neck, like just kind of in the middle. Uh, I don't like the really vintage thin, smaller, rounded fr fr radius type necks. I don't like V's either. Um, I don't like the super flat wizard plank necks, like the Vi neck has got a bit of a shoulder and i'm kind of used to it yeah brian thanks brian yeah that's that must have been the vintage t friedman that i played it with 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 that bigger neck but um yeah so like i was saying about my mesa like the cali tweed like i just i mean i like it it's warm and big sounding it has a slightly different clean tone than, than the um than the uh than the mark 535 but it's single channel amp with reverb uh, I like that it's got the different, you know, 2 watt, 10 watt, 20 watt, 30 watt, 40 watt settings on it. So it's very uh, good for using live. Like you can attenuate your own volume quite easily with it. And it sounds great. Very nice, warm, clean sound. But I got an amp that does something very similar. So Cali Tweed's up for sale. And speaking of Friedman, I've just placed an order. If you saw on Facebook today, my post. I'm bringing home, or what's being delivered to me is a Friedman 50 watt small box combo uh, that's coming. And um, that's basically a two channel amp with a Plexi on the side and a, and a BE, uh, Friedman's BE, uh, one of their channels on the other side. 
uh, BE being small box and BE being kind of early Friedman designs or early products that he put out and kind of sort of what are you know widely considered to be benchmarks. Um, I'm a little scared because um, for a couple reasons. I hope it arrives intact with no smashed tubes or damage. First of all, it's coming from Quebec to Ontario. Um, I don't usually buy amps without or buy anything without trying it first, like any pieces of equipment without trying it first. But and there's not a heck of a lot of YouTube uh, videos uh, out there with showing the combo of the version of the small box. So we'll see where that takes me, and hopefully it gets here sometime soon. So, uh, you know, you can you guys can expect to see a video about that uh, at some point. So, Brian's saying the JJ is basically a clean Vox on one side and the BE on the other. I'm going to love it. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that, brother. Thanks, man. I mean, I have played Friedman's before. Uh, my, my, my brother, the hack. Uh, their <laughs> guitar hack <laughs> has a uh, Runt 20, which uh, I've messed around with. Sounds pretty good. Um, I've played uh, Pink Taco V1. That was pretty damn good. And uh, yeah, Brian's saying I just got to get an extension cab and I'll have a 2x12 uh, mini stack. That's true. And I will destroy my drummer and any other guitar player in the band with beautiful, awesome tones. <laughs> So, yeah, folks, well, um, so, yeah, that's really been um, kind of the, the run of gear and technology this year, like, uh, for, for me in 2022. Uh, I've spoken a lot about um, the um, run clean side is the same as a JJ. Oh, so it's a Vox thing, eh? That's, Brian, that's what you run in your house. You must have friendly neighbors and, a, and a, no no young children or baby, sleeping babies around. That's amazing. Um, but, yeah, like I was saying, that that was my run of tech. Uh, you know, um, I, I for sure think that um, technology does play a role in, you know, shaping the sounds and the tones and that I make and giving me creative inspiration. Um, you know, I, I used to, like, I'm not too picky about guitars, like, you know, but, like, you know, I, I'm not going to play, you know, shred death metal on my telly, for example, right? Uh, nor am I going to play, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, country chicken picking on my PO. Actually, I might, uh, you know, that, that might work. But, um, you know, like, they're, they're just tools. They're meant for different jobs, right? So, you know, I like them all, as you can see behind, or as you can see behind, no, wait, that way, that way, that way, that way. Oh god, this YouTube backwards camera thing is confusing as hell. Anyway, I like all these different sounds, which is why I have all these different, you know, three different amps, um, you know, twelve guitars, all these, you know, five different pedal boards, because um, I I like it all literally, um, and it's great being able to pick and choose from that from that sort of array. So I really enjoy it, you know. I spent, I, now that I'm kind of refining my gear and getting to what I like, it's actually fending off the gas a little bit because I'm getting like my dream amp, you know, my, you know, my, like I've always wanted a Marshall, a real great Marshall Plexi sound. And that's what I'm getting with, uh, with the small box. And, you know, the Surge just sounds amazing. The Mesa, the Mesa is so versatile. So I'm really happy with my amps, really happy with my pedals and guitars. You know, made stupid decisions flipping stuff that i love that i ended up buying back this year so you know i'm kind of at the end of at the end of my rope and, and also you know my finances i've got everything kind of that i feel that i need for 2023 so now it's a matter of using it and upping the upping the game as far as production for densical music so uh so brian's saying he lives in a 55 plus community when neighbor neighbor his next door neighbor in his guitar room is deaf as a doorknob that's pretty good she's 87 and um yeah and dwight so yeah brian's lucky to have a deaf 87 year old neighbor there she doesn't mind the racket or the sweet tones i should say and dwight's saying he's got different guitars and amps to you know as each ins yeah definitely each inspiration is different and yeah, you know, like there's going to be new stuff coming out this year and forever, you know, so that, um, you know, we're all, go we're always going to find new inspiration, you know, I'm finding inspiration back, 
you know, with older school technology and things that I enjoy, like, you know, pedals and amps and things like that and guitars. So, you know, like I still like my Les Pauls, you know, guitars like this and, you know, my P90, you know, vintage type guitars. But I also like things like the Pia and, and the Sir Modern, you know, because they just play like butter, you know. It's kind of like, you know, I can, I mean, I think of it as cars. Um, and I'm going to use this line in a later video, but... You know, I like my my fancy schmancy, you know, supercars. I like I like that um, that aesthetic. You know, the Bugattis and the Koenigseggs or whatever, you, however you say them. But um, I also like you know my classic 60s, 70s muscle cars, 80s muscle cars, right? So, so Dwight's saying his next door neighbor is a bass guitar player and is usually louder. Yeah, bass frequencies travel far, man. Uh, Quentin's back. He had to make some Swiss Miss hot coca. Did you bring some for everybody? And uh, yeah, uh, Brian Saint Dwight, you should you should call that bass player neighbor of yours up and uh, and uh, have a jam. It's the way to do it. Make friends. Anyways, folks, uh, we're just a little bit past my uh, scheduled uh, time here, but uh, I want to thank everybody. We had a record high. We got thirteen people in the chat right now. I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, stay tuned for more great content and awesome music that's in the pipe um, coming out this year. Um, if you uh, have any questions or, or want to drop me a line, you know, leave me a comment in the chat. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And I uh, want to thank you guys for, uh, for tuning in tonight. Um, all the best for 2023. And this is Den Skill out.